Die Flash Die, Proxy Ham's been canceled and DEFCON is sad. The first zero day Java attack in two years, and yes, people, patent trolls still suck. All that coming up now on Threatwire. Greetings, I'm Patrick Norton and this is Threatwire for July 13th, 2015. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedoms. A huge thanks to everyone watching this show three times a week and supporting us. The news, well, it's a Monday, people, so brace yourself for impact. Remember last week when it turned out that uh, the data that from, came out of the hacking team revealed that 400 and something gigabyte file revealed a flash vulnerability? We talked about it here and on Tech Thing as well. Well, on Friday night, Adobe revealed that they had found yet another exploit in the hacking team data set. Critical vulnerabilities, well, there's too many of them to list. They've been identified in Adobe Flash Player 18.0.0.204 and earlier for Windows, Macintosh, and Linux score all the platforms. Successful exploitation could cause a crash and potentially allow an attacker to take control of the affected system. Time to remove Flash from your Computer, go watch Tech Thing from last week to find out how to do it. Seriously, people, it is time. Kill it, or at least turn it off, except when you don't need it. At Rhino Security tweeted out, effective immediately, we are halting further dev on pound proxy ham and will not be releasing any further details or source for the device. And then they said the DEF CON talk was canceled. And if you go to DEF CON 23's presentation page, the proxy ham crew is definitely not going to show up. I'm seriously bummed. I would have loved to have heard Benjamin's talk on this. If you haven't heard about proxy ham, CSO is a good write-up. Proxy ham, it was a slick Raspberry Pi powered pre-made proxy in a box that could connect to public Wi-Fi and then would use a 900 megahertz radio to connect to a Wi-Fi network up to two miles away and quote, blend in with traffic on that spectrum. So if the person using it were to be tracked via IP addresses to a physical location, all anyone would find at that location is the proxy proxy ham box, which pre-made would cost about 200 bucks. Well, apparently somebody didn't want pound whistleblower pound anonymity to happen. I'll just stare in the general direction of the White House right now. Our studio manager, Paul, points out that I could have just pointed to the White House right up there. While we're in the whole DC area behind me, Security Week reports that the first Java Zero Day attack, quote, reported after nearly two years, unquote, took place on a, quote, NATO member and a U.S. defense organization. Well, apparently the attack was by Pondstorm, uh, and it, it was phishing, man. So they sent out emails that contained links to malicious domains hosting a Java exploit. The exploit would launch a Trojan dropper that drops a payload that was detected as spy underscore fake ms dot c to the login user folder. Uh, tons of detail on the Trend Micro blog that this report links to, and we have a link to that Trend Micro blog in the show notes. Ars Technica has a great write-up on the latest study from United Patents. That's a group that helps companies deal with patent trolls. Patent lawsuits are up 11% over last year, according to the report, and <laughs> brace yourself, a full 90% of tech patent cases are filed by patent trolls. End quote. Other industries average closer to like 68%. Patent trolls, aka non-practicing entities, are essentially companies that own patents with the sole goal of suing other practicing companies, i.e. the ones that make things, for royalties. The stats get pretty sickening at this point. The top three companies that file these suits are all represented by the same law firm. Apple, the richest company in tech, and probably the world, is the top target. And at least one of the trolling companies is receiving patents or variations on patents that have already, well, one of its main patents that it's making variations on, it has actually been invalidated by the courts. <laughs> Patent law. So much fun. Have any thoughts on today's stories? Do me a favor, leave them down below. Before I scoot, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone that has supported ThreatWire so far on Patreon. If you find value from this show and can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash threatwire. We may even feature your adorable fur babies like these ones in our next episode. So much fuzzy love. We want to do this show three times a week. Uh, we got a milestone goal to make that happen with a rotation of Darren Kitchen, Shannon Morris, and myself. And I hope you'll contribute to help us keep this coming completely independent and ad-free. If you can't donate, a like, a share, or a subscribe goes a long way too. You can find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you on the internet.